I now give the floor to His Excellency Abdella Bouhabib, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Emigrants of Lebanon. Mr. President, I wish first and foremost to congratulate warmly you upon your election to the helm of the 79th session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. We wish you every success and we convey to you our full support for your agenda unity and diversity for the advancement of peace, sustainable development, and human dignity for present and future generations. Mr. President, Lebanon is currently enduring a crisis which is threatening its very existence. The future of our people and our prosperity are imperiled. This is a situation that requires international intervention on an urgent basis before the situation spirals out of control. Uh, with a domino effect making this crisis impossible to contain, uh, just as it will be impossible to extinguish the flames of this crisis, which will transform into a black hole that will engulf regional and international peace and security. The crisis in Lebanon threatens uh, the entire Middle East with the worst if the situation remains as it currently is and if the world remains immobile. Mr. President, we welcome the declaration delivered yesterday by the United States and by France as supported by a number of friendly states. Deliver, uh, offering the possibility of long-term calm, helping to ensure the restoration of stability along the border, as well as the return of displaced persons. Furthermore, we demand that all possible measures be adopted for this declaration to be implemented. What we are currently experiencing in Lebanon is a consequence of the absence of a lasting uh, sustainable solution. It is not the cause of an absence of a, a sustainable solution. The cause is the occupation. And we wish to reiterate this explicitly. The cause is the occupation. To claim anything else would be a loss of time. So long as the occupation persists, there will be instability and there will be war. We have repeatedly, on numerous occasions through the United Nations, we have striven to resolve border disputes with Israel. However, uh, that uh, this is the, the Israel has continuously eluded the issue or disregarded the matter. This is a difficult situation which we are experiencing, and in light of this, we are increasingly uh, uh, committed to international law. We are seeking refuge in the decisions under international law. To that end, uh, Lebanon is, has contributed to the drafting of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights through uh, uh, one of our children, Shal Mal. And despite the inability of the United Nations to protect us from the Israeli aggression up until now, we remain committed to the role of this organization as a front line of defense in the face of occupation, violence, devastation, and oppression. Today, we desperately need the United Nations to play its role as a refuge for small countries who have been victimized by aggression. These countries include my homeland, Lebanon. Since this tragedy, which we've experienced, has broke out since this bitter reality, we have observed that dialogue is an alternative to the language of weapons to resolve conflict. We have demonstrated ability to be a reliable partner in building consensus, as was the case in October 2022, when the maritime borders were delimited between Lebanon and Israel. This is the best 
proof of our commitment to negotiations for peaceful dispute resolution. Furthermore, we propose that during two Security Council meetings, the most recent one was held on the 17th of June last, and the, uh, the, the this topic addressed was the situation in the Middle East, we proposed an integrated framework to achieve a lasting uh, a pacification in the a border south of Lebanon, and we wish to reiterate today our call for a ceasefire on all fronts, for this to be an opportunity and a prerequisite towards the full-fledged implementation of Resolution 1701 of the United Nations Security Council, which has been effective in establishing a relative degree of stability in the south of Lebanon since the end of the July 2006 war up until 7 October 2023. We, moreover, are counting on the support of the international community and specifically on the support of friendly countries in reinforcing the deployment of the Lebanese army in the south of the Litani River and delivering the necessary equipment and to ensure that uh, troop levels can be increased in the wake of uh, the launch by the state of a conscription campaign as part of a clear commitment to the implementation of Resolution 1701. In this regard, there will be no weapons without the consent of the Lebanese government, and there will be no other authority than that of the Lebanese government, as is stipulated in the above-mentioned resolution. Our demand to secure support is not uh, merely a reflection of our commitment to honoring our commitments under Resolution 1701. This is also... This is also our confirmation of the importance, reaffirmation of the importance of cooperation and support from the international community to surmount security-related challenges in order to bolster peace and security in the region. We are all cognizant of the economic crisis that has been plaguing our country. And despite this, our government has taken a decision to, for 100,000 additional soldiers to be deployed to the south of the country. And this this is not a mere detail, quite the contrary, this is a clear political message to the international community reflecting the fact that Lebanon fully intends to implement Resolution 1701 to which we are wedded. And even at the worst times, including the present, we are not standing idly by. We are mobilizing our efforts at the highest level to protect our people, our national institutions, as well as our sovereignty. Mr. President, among the most significant provisions of Resolution 1701, uh, em emphasizing uh, the internationally recognized borders of Lebanon delimited be between Lebanon and Pal uh, Palestine in 1923, the reaffirm uh, reaffirmed in the Lebanese-Israeli Lebanese -Israeli Truce Agreement uh, signed on the island of Rhodes in 1949, under the supervision of the United Nations. This will be achieved with the agreement of the agreement on 13 uh, points that are a source of discord. And pursuant to, to this, Israel will withdraw from all Lebanese regions that it has occupied and continues to occupy in the direction of the internationally recognized border. We wish to reiterate our commitment to the role of UNIFIL, the, the peacekeeping force which is active in the south of Lebanon. And since its inception, it has significantly contributed to s stability and peace in the region. Up until 8 October 2023, there had been no grave incident threatening regional peace and security that had been recorded. And we wish to take this opportunity to thank UNIFIL for the tremendous sacrifice it has made in light of the tremendous challenges it has been facing in particular over the past recent months, as well as specifically in recent days. Mr. President, the um, Israel, Israel, instead of uh, uh, focusing on incessant wars, uh, 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 Israel is continuously radicalizing. One of the gravest challenges Lebanon currently faces is uh, this increase 
in aggression. The war has expanded and, and it's spilled over into Lebanese regions. We are increasingly concerned due to the systematic uh, destruction of Lebanese border villages, the collective punishment imposed on people, the setting of fire to agricultural lands with white phosphorus, thereby rendering these lands unusable for many years. We, in recent days, have borne witness to a detestable, repugnant example of the transformation of telecommunications devices. Civilian devices were transformed into ticking time bombs that were deliberately and simultaneously blown up, thereby claiming the lives of dozens, including children, including women, resulting in thousands of people being wounded, hundreds of whom are in critical condition, in addition to hundreds of who were disfigured, maimed, who lost limbs, who lost their vision. From this rostrum, we reiterate our warning against this aggression, which will con is continuously intensifying this attempt to, to play with fire, uh, to plunge the entire Middle East into a conflagration. We reiterate our rejection of war, our legitimate right to defend ourselves pursuant to the Charter of the, international, of the United Nations and international law. This goes hand in hand with our tireless efforts through our contacts and meetings to avoid falling into the trap of the Israeli occupying power, which is attempting to extend and prolong the war. Mr. President, the return of Israeli displaced persons to their cities and their settlements will only cannot be achieved through war, cannot be achieved through bombardment, fighting, hostilities, or the displacement of Lebanese people. The shortest path for their return is a comprehensive, immediate ceasefire. As stipulated in the uh, f U.S. Franco uh, Trent the Declaration, which was uh, from yesterday supported by uh, friendly states, a full implementation of Resolution 1701 as part of a comprehensive uh, a framework accompanied by clear international guaranteed, uh, transparent, and an, an end, a definitive end to land, sea, and air. In uh, incursions and breaches of Lebanese sovereignty and our borders, our internationally recognized borders. This is necessary. These violations have exceeded, there have been more than 35,000 such violations since 2006. Mr. President, uh, has Israel not had enough of the endless war since 1948? When will it be time for Israel to give a real opportunity for peace. Will Israel not embrace the path of peace? Will When will this happen? Instead of using the language of fire and steel, Lebanon and Arab countries have clearly, without any ambiguity, categorically embraced peace through their Arab Peace Initiative, which was the fruit of the Beirut Arab Summit in 2002, with the adoption by Arab states of the two-state solution through the demand of Arab states uh, for the implementation of the United Nations resolutions, which unfortunately have remained dead letter. It is now incumbent upon Israel, Israel, both the government and the people, Israel as a whole, if they really want peace, to embrace peace, to choose peace, to want peace instead of war, and to uh, go beyond their obsessions and security-related anxiety, breaking the cycle of violence in the region, ending escalation stopping escalation and the risk of complete conflagration in the, middle, in the Middle East also requires collective efforts as part of a clear, defined timeline together with clear guarantees and recognition of legitimate rights, including the right to self-determination pursuant to international law. There can be no peace without the two-state solution, uh, regardless of how much time this takes. Mr. President, by way of conclusion, we reiterate our call for a lasting solution for the full, balanced implementation of Resolution 1701 the recognition of our land borders recognized at the international level to ensure that Lebanon and the region can avoid further 
warfare and destruction. We are at a very difficult time, marred by a tragic escalation of violence in Lebanon from the heart of the conflict. The resolution 1701 of the Security Council is the primary line of defense for Lebanon. This resolution is not merely a document, not merely a framework for international action. No, this is a commitment on the part of the international community to safeguard regional peace and security. We cannot deviate from this process insofar as this is the legal diplomatic bedrock guaranteeing the protection of Lebanese and regional security. Respecting this resolution is absolutely necessary, not just for Lebanon, but for Israel, too, and for the region as a whole. This is the best tool at the disposal of the international community to break this cycle of violence, to ensure that diplomacy prevails despite uh, difficulties and for the p despite the fact that the path ahead is difficult. The cost of a diplomatic failure will be very high. For this reason, we must bear in mind that with each new wave of violence, there is unimaginable suffering endured particularly by civilians. All civilian, any civilian killed is a tragedy that is unacceptable, and there's no justification for this. When uh, civilian areas are targeted systematically, as is currently the case in Lebanon, we are talking here about acts that are tantamount to war crimes. There can be no justification for the mass murder of civilians. However, as we, as we talk about death and destruction, devastation, we also need to endeavor to find solutions. Uh, time is of the essence. There's a need to embrace a political process to end this crisis which is being, uh, which is escalating. There's a need to move forward to reach a political solution. We together need to give thought to a political solution to this crisis instead of bogging ourselves increasingly down in the militarization of this conflict, the escalation of the conflict, and the expansion of the conflict. Diplomacy is not always easy, but diplomacy is the only way to save innocent lives and homelands. Lebanon, for our part, we are determined to tread upon this path. Lebanon views the uh, F U.S. French initiative, which was a French U.S. initiative, which was supported by other co friendly countries, as an opportunity to 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 generate momentum, to take steps towards ending this crisis, uh, and uh, diplomacy needs to succeed. There is no other choice. Thank you. Don't miss out. Log on to oneindia.com for more updates.